Hi, today I want to talk to you about a very fundamental elbow abnormality that's frequently missed by radiologists. Let's take a look at the images now. The images we have here are a frontal and oblique view of the elbow. I have not given you a lateral view because it's not really contributory to the case, but take a look at this for a few seconds and see if you can see any abnormality whatsoever, realizing that we frequently miss things that aren't there, that's supposed to be there, right? If there's something extra there, we can pick it up right away. But if there's something missing, we tend not to see those things. So take a look at this for a few seconds. Let me now show you the MRI. Here is a fat suppressed fluid sensitive sequence on your left and a T1 weighted sequence on your right. Let me just outline the anatomy just a little bit for you. We always talk about the radial head and capitellum as being a joint and the ulna and trochlea as being a joint. Oftentimes, the demarcation of where the capitellum ends and the trochlea begins is ill-defined. The way I like to think about it is with the articulation. We know that the radial head aligns with the capitellum. So if we can draw our radial head, which is like this, we know that here is where our capitellum is going to be. So this is the condyle of the capitellum. Conversely, if we know that this is where the radial head ends, everything on this side has to be your trochlea, right? So where do we see the abnormality on the MRI? We see it right over here. And what is this? This is the lateral aspect of your trochlea. We can see it a little bit better on the T1 weighted sequence. This is the ulnar trochlear joint. We know that because this is the ulna. So what it's articulating with has to be the trochlea because the radial head articulates with the capitellum. So this has to be the lateral aspect of your trochlea. And if we look, there's nice fatty marrow in majority of the trochlea. We see it in the olecranon process. But what is abnormal is this thing right over here. And this is low signal on T1 weighted sequence. So we know there's edema and desiccation going on. So that is a trochlear osteochondral lesion. Now let's get back to that plain radiograph. On the left is the abnormal radiograph, and on the right is the contralateral normal elbow. And take a look at, again, the surface. Let's connect the capitellum and the trochlea. We know that this is the radial head, right? So we know this is exactly where your capitellum ends. So indeed, nice, beautiful looking capitellum. And from here, we get to the undulations of the trochlea. Lovely, right? There's a little undulation, sure, but there's no notch. Now let's take a look at our abnormal side. Again, here is a radial head. So we know the capitellum ends right here and anything this way has to be your trochlea. So if we follow the trochlear surface, it's no longer a straight line across to the capitellum. We have to jog around this pseudo intercondylar notch and that's what we've sort of termed it. There should not be a notch between the condyle of the capitellum and the condyle of the trochlea. It should be a nice slightly undulating surface as we see on the normal side. So this is a great example, I think, of a trochlear osteochondral lesion frequently missed because, again, it's difficult to find something that's missing. If you're interested in reading more about this, we wrote a little case report uh, about a decade or so ago, and we called it the pseudoendochondral or notch sign. I'm going to leave a link to it down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll have more pediatric radiology related stuff for you in the future. And turn on that bell notification if you want to find out exactly when I upload a new video. Thanks.